Welcome to the Arch Test menu tutorial. In this video, we will use NumXL to examine the Arch Test and the intuition behind it. Furthermore, we will help you to draw connections between the Arch Test and its close cousin, the White Noise Test. For sample data, we will use the daily log returns of IBM stock for the period between June 1961 and November 1962. This is a familiar sample first analyzed by Box, Jenkins, and Reinsell in their time series textbook, Time Series Forecast and Control, from 1976. To start, I've plotted the daily prices and the daily log returns in red. Now we can start by examining the summary statistics of our sample. For that, we need to select the NumXL tab in the toolbar. Now, select the Descriptive Statistics icon from the toolbar. Using the Summary Stat Wizard, first locate and select the daily log returns. The current selected cell is chosen by default as the output cell. The Summary Statistics table is displayed in your worksheet. For this tutorial, we will focus on the rightmost part of this table, the white noise and arch tests. Now, let's look at the sample data distribution. For that, we will need to use the histogram function of the Excel data analysis pack. Make sure you have this add-in installed and selected. Select the Data tab and click on Data Analysis on the rightmost part of the toolbar. In the Data Analysis dialog box, select Histogram and click OK. In the Histogram dialog box, select the Log Daily Return series. Select the desired bin values. For this example, I have chosen values between negative 5 and positive 5%. Select Output Range to print the results in the current worksheet. From the output, find the frequency and cumulative percentage, then plot them both. Now click OK. Now the histogram table and the graph are both generated in your worksheet. Now we need to create the QQ plot and examine the tails of the distribution. First, standardize the bin limits. The standard deviation is computed as shown in the formula above. Copy your formula to the end of the column. Calculate the inverse cumulative normal distribution and copy your results to the end of the column. Now select the two Q columns and insert a scatter plot. Now let's make some formatting changes to this graph. Now add the diagonal line. Now let's change to the grid type background and some more graph formatting. Be sure to note the asymmetry in the two tails of the distribution as shown in the Q-plot, especially the far ends. Now we're ready to examine the squared time series. First, let's construct it. Now run the descriptive stats for the squared time series. And now we have a summary statistic table. Let's take a look at the white noise here. This is equivalent to the arch test that we did with the original data. Now let's take a look at the autocorrelation and the partial autocorrelation table and plot. Select the squared time series and set the max lags for ACF and PACF to 12, then hit OK. The correlogram analysis shows a significant autocorrelation for lags up to 10. To add more lags to our analysis, we need to expand the table and to update our graph to reflect these changes. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, please send them to us at support at spiderfinancial.com.